we doing? Yeah. You knew I was going to ask you to do a second time, like some of you at least. Well, welcome to Wesley. My name is Anthony. I'm the lead intern here. If it's your first time with us, I'd like to thank you so much for joining us. If you're coming back, welcome back. Hope to see you again next week. Got a couple of announcements for you here. First off, tonight after dinner, which is Chick-fil-A, by the way. I don't know if you didn't know. After dinner, we're going to be leaving here at 9 p.m. We're going to be going to Holiday Lanes, bowling, free for everybody. So we're going to be carpooling, so if you don't have a ride, ask somebody if you can ride in their car. Odds are they'll be riding in someone's car. We're going to be carpooling. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a great time. Uh, as well as next week, the meal is Jersey Mike's, after which we will be having a trivia night. So that'll be hosted by yours truly, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, as well as next week, our soul group startup. So getting here at 6 p.m., we'll be doing our soul groups. Those are our small groups that we do before worship, uh, establishing community, getting to know each other, checking in. It's a really good time. We encourage you to come for those. Um, our leadership applications are open for this year, for next semester. Uh, those are open throughout the semester. So if you're interested in helping make all of this happen, uh, the link to that is on your bulletin. Um, and tonight, we have a guest speaker, John Redmond, the Director of Missions at Muncie Memorial. And we're going to be sharing a little bit of lesson with us tonight. So, are there any announcements from the floor that I've missed? Hearing none, can anyone like to come pray for us?
to us, perfect servant to death, even death on the cross. Give us a picture of your face, show us a measure of your grace. Than we are. 
So they give a negative report to the Israelites about the land that they had scouted. The land we passed through to explore is one that devours its inhabitants and all the people. We saw it in where the men were great in size. We even saw them there. The descendants of Anak came from to ourselves, and we seemed like grasshoppers, and we must have seemed the same to them. And the word of God for the people of God. Thanks to God. God. Thank you, Emily. She asked if I gave that text just to be mean. Um, I was just giving her so she could tell me how to say the word. Oh, that's pretty difficult. Um, my name is John Redman. Uh, like Anthony said, I am the director of missions over at Muncie, uh, one of your local Methodist churches here in town, uh, just downtown. And uh, as always, I'm always so excited to be here. Uh, this is a place where uh, I develop my own journey in faith. And I hope and pray that that will be the case for you as well, to be able to help lead in worship, to be able to uh, engage in mission uh, here in Johnson City and on your campus. And so anyway, I'm just, I'm delighted to be here. It's always just, just fun to be here with you all. Um, well, tonight, uh, I would like to start with a movie clip. Um, I think that, I think you're going to like it. I don't know, it's just kind of inspiring to watch. So. Uh, we're just going to just roll right into that. So, make sure you turn it away. Imagine what it is to cross an ocean. For weeks you see nothing but the horizon. Perfect and empty. You live in the grip of fear. Fear of storms. Fear of sickness on board. Fear of the immensity. Drive that fear down deep into your belly. Study your charts. Watch your compass. Pray for a fair wind. And hope. Pure, naked, fragile. Resurrection. A true adventure. Coming out of the vast unknown. Out of the immensity. Into a new life. That, Your Majesty. God, we thank you uh, for this evening. We thank you for everyone that was able to make it here safely. And we pray right now that you will open our hearts and our minds to the movement of your spirit, that it will change and transform us uh, into your image. So this clip represents a lot of uh, the battle going on all throughout the Old Testament with the Israelites. Uh, on one hand, you've got people uh, that are part of the spies that are saying, uh, 
Uh, beyond is, is this land with milk and honey. They're seeing the good thing. They're seeing the positive thing. And on the other side, you've got the ten naysayers that are casting fear, saying, don't go there. There's some really big people. They're going to eat us. And so here you have this balance. You have somebody that, uh, that wants to, to move them into this better land and out of this, this dark wilderness they're in. And then others are just so scared to go beyond. And what this story is, is it's a story about faith. It's a story about trust and hope. And it's a story of overcoming our fears. Most importantly, this story teaches us that God desires the best for the Israelites. And God is asking and is pushing them, trust me, even though there is some danger out there, trust me, I will be with you in this moment. And on the other hand, we learn from this text that God is a God that doesn't press himself on anyone. God doesn't press in saying, you have to do this, you have to do that. Rather, we can discover that God is a God of free will. God is a God of choice. But the choice that these first generations Israelites made was a choice of death. Because they actually died in the wilderness. It wasn't until the second generation came along that they made it into the promised land and moved on. And so I ask tonight, this evening, what is your greatest fear that's keeping you from moving into the promised land with God? What is your greatest fear that's keeping you of experiencing God's joy and peace and goodness? Is it death? That's always seems to be a hot topic of one thing's. Or maybe another one that I've heard a lot of times from young folks is the fear of being alone. Or maybe you're scared of like spiders and snakes. That's a possible fear. Or I think another one that most of us experience is we have a fear that we don't belong. Or that we're not worthy enough to be able to do something because we don't feel as though we are smart enough or we have the ability or we look good enough. These are just small things, but have great influence on us. Because see, how we view ourselves affects if we move in the direction of which God is calling us to. See, in Numbers 13.33, as Emily helped me learn these words here, um, and I still will butcher them, no pun intended, um, is that we saw, it says 1333, it says we saw there the Nephilim, the descendants of Anak, come from Nephilim. And we saw ourselves as grasshoppers. And that's how we appeared to them. See, they didn't see themselves as anything better than a small grasshopper as they were facing these big giants. And if we look at the video clip that we just had, we can learn a lot from this, this guy who, I can't remember his name, St. William or something like that. Um, but we can learn a lot from what he said about how to overcome our fears and how to overcome things that are preventing us from being with God. The first thing that he mentions, he, say, he asked the question, what is your compass? What is your compass? And some of us would say our compass lies in our own ability. Our compass lies in the way that we look, the way that we present ourselves to others. Our compass lies in what are our desires? How do I live my best life now? But I would beg to say that what our compass really could be to experience true joy is that you were made in God's image, beautifully and wonderfully made. You are not a small grasshopper. You are somebody that God delights in. You are somebody that God loves. You are somebody that God made you how you are. And then the second one kind of goes along with this is who are you or whose are you? And I know you all have probably heard this in church. Maybe hopefully you've heard it most of your life. 
But you are a beloved child of God. A child that because of what Jesus did, you belong to the God, the creator of our universe. The second thing that he mentions is that we cling to pure and fragile hope. 2 Timothy 1, 7 talks about anxiety and fear. It says, God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and of love and of self-control. The third thing is that he mentions land light resurrection spring out of the unknown into new life. See, part of the adventure and the journey of our faith is that we learn to listen to what God is asking us to do. We learn to quiet our hearts. We learn to trust that little inkling that's asking us to do something that is maybe a little bit scary. We, we look to see, what is it, God, that you really need me to do? How is God prompting you? And these scriptures are telling us to not be fearful, that God is with you. God is with all of us. And so how? How do we do this? How do we overcome our fears? How do we overcome our insecurities? And I have to go to uh, Sir Walter again. He says, little by little, if you have that like music fading, you know, going in and getting bigger and bigger as it swells, he speaks to the queen and says, little by little, you see the glimmer, the shadow of the land that you're trusting that is right on the horizon. That little by little as we walk through life, our faith increases, our faith decreases, we doubt things. But the important thing is that we stick with it and that we trust that God is right there with us. In February of this year, I started a new role. Um, I started to work as the director of missions in the melting pot. And this is a ministry that I primarily work with uh, very low income or those that are unhoused in our community. The ones that look weird, the ones that smell bad, the ones that are scary, the ones that the city wants to be gone. They don't like them on their city. They don't like them on their storefronts because it scares people away. It scares customers from their businesses. And so my first Saturday when we were serving breakfast, uh, Steve Wheeler was the, the guy that was before me, and we were finishing up. And as we're finishing up, there's this one man that's laying on the ground. It was February, so it's very cold out. And Steve says, we got to get him out of here. And I'm like, really? This is my first Saturday. I'm like, I don't want to have to do anything hard. And so we go over to him. And he's grumbling, and he's cursing us out, and he smells like urine. And I'm just like, this is, what am I doing? Why did I choose to do this, you know? And so we get him up there, and as we are walking him up the stairs, and we don't have handicap accessibility that still drives me crazy. If any of you are good grand riders, I can use your help. And we're moving him up the, the stairs. And as we're moving him up the stairs, he is grimacing, and he's, you know, like crying and just like all these loud noises. And we're learning that there's something severely wrong with him. So we sit him in the wheelchair. And as we sit him in the wheelchair, I try to move his, his leg and he screams. And I'm thinking, oh, great, his leg's broken, you know. And so we put it there. And so Steve calls 911, my first Saturday, right? Like we call the ambulance. Like, this is going really well. This is my future. And so as we're waiting for the ambulance to come, I'm sitting beside this man. This man that smells, that looks bad, that looks strange. And something tells me, John, grab his hand. And I was like, really? Like, did you see his hand? <laughs> and so sure enough, I grab his hand. His cold hand, his hand that had calluses all over it, that had dirt ingrained and embedded into his fingernails. And I grabbed his hand. And as I grabbed his hand, something shifted inside of my body. And I look up at his eyes and I said, what is, what is your name? And all of a sudden, tears start streaming down his face. 
Maybe because he's in pain, but maybe because nobody's ever asked him his name. And he gets out the words James, and he, he stumbles through it. And it was at that moment that when I looked through his blue eyes, I didn't see a man that smelled. I didn't see a man that was less than. I saw, I really, this is true, I really saw Jesus in that very moment. And we read about it in Matthew 25. But it was in that moment where I listened and I pushed myself beyond the limits that I experienced God in a deep and profound way. This world that we live in is full of hurt and pain. And a lot of you are experiencing that now. A lot of you are experiencing what the world has to throw at you. But the world is also a beautiful and wonderful place when we listen to the inklings of the Spirit in our lives. Because when we listen to them, it pushes us past the fears of what the naysayers might tell us. And it allows us to experience God's love and grace in many new ways. Because I believe that God has a plan for you in your life. Whether this is your first Tuesday night here or whether you've been here for four or five years or ten years or however long you're here for. But I imagine this, that what could you do without these paralyzing fears that, that plague you to say, hmm, no, I'm just like, I'm this big. I'm just a little grasshopper. I'm just a freshman. I'm just 18 years old. I'm maybe even 17. Frodo, a friend of mine, came here when he was 17. I'm not good enough. But Jesus says, I'm aging. You're beautiful. You're wonderful. See, I believe that we would see more of God's kingdom on this earth if we were able to push past our fears. I believe that you would not be fearful to step into these scary places to fight some of the injustices that plague and challenge our world today. I believe that you could be free of the anxiety that maybe you're experiencing as you're early on this fall. I believe that you would not let these negative pulls of how social media and you get on there and you go, well, I didn't go on this vacation or I didn't go on that vacation or I didn't look my hair this way or I mean hair, you know me, that's kind of a joke. But, you get my point, right? We, we get into these places where we just think that we're nothing, but God's kingdom is right here and waiting for you to react. And so my question is, are you going to stay in the wilderness and die? Or are you going to trust what God has for you and live into this land of milk? And honey. Amen.